My name is Ulrich Jensberger. I'm a violin maker based in Biberach, south of Germany. My name is Piotr Pilaszek and I'm a Polish violin maker based in Poznań, in Poland. My name is Anton Somers, violin maker uh, based in Antwerp, Belgium. My name is Lorenzo Cassi and I'm a violin maker based in Valtidone, Italy. My name is Gilles Nair. I'm a French bow maker based in Bordeaux. Sono Davide Sora, sono un liutaio cremonese che lavora a Cremona da ormai quasi 40 anni. Mi chiamo Ryosuke Ito. Sono Giappone, ma adesso abito a Cremona da 2008. My name is Ulrich Jensberger. I'm a violin maker based in Biberach, south of Germany. Why do you choose this little town, Ringschneid, to live? Because normally, for the normal maker, we prefer big city, which you can reach more customers. So what, what is your idea to settle down in this little village? Well, for me, it was a quite easy decision. Um, the work I do requires quiet. I need to have a quiet place to find my inner balance. Only then I'm able to make this work. In a big city I would be too much disturbed by all these customers and um, I'm happy whenever a customer comes along but to do a consistent work with such a concentration and such a perfection is for me, for my person, it's almost not possible in, in an environment which is too unquiet, too much trouble, too much noise. And I really enjoy this nature around me and the light is, is just great. It's perfect. I have all the light I want from the morning hours till the evening. I have different light sources and this is very important for my work. Yeah, you have been teaching for almost 13 years in Mintenmar. Yes, by coincidence I got a request from the school. They needed a teacher. And I liked the time being in Mittenwald and especially I liked the idea to teach young people, young motivated people from all over the world. And this was really a nice idea. I just did it as trial. And finally, this trial took um, almost 13 years. Honestly, I know you from the first Beijing competition. Before that, all my partners are Italian makers. And what is the idea why you participated the first Beijing competition. It was a funny idea for me because um, normally we have all these Chinese goods coming to Europe. Yeah. So it was just a funny idea to send the violin there. I never thought that I would have any chance because of all these Chinese makers and they have quite good makers nowadays. So I never thought that there will be a chance. It was really nice for me that you decided after Beijing that you want to have me as partner yeah. before I won the second gold medal. Then the second gold medal for you was just a, a proof, or just a, 
That really to show that you me. were right. Yeah. yeah. If this wouldn't have been, I think we wouldn't be partners. If that sounds good. So yeah, this is the violin which I ordered in 2019, I believe. Yeah. So it's after three years of waiting, we have it in our hand. After, after a week, we may have a friend who visit us so he can play the sound for us. You will hear it later. There's a lot of form during the Stradivari Golden Period, like mm -hmm. the P form, PG form. Why you choose the P form to your personal starting point? Well, for me, it's very elegant. And anyway, it has all the characters which a strat for me should have this um, slightly straight parts, slightly straight shoulders, very masculine shoulders. Yeah. I really like this um, masculine yeah. outlook. It's also my first image come in my head that your violin is look more like the, uh, the David, what we see in the Florence Square. Before I saw your score, nobody did the chamfer with a chisel. Mm. But uh, why you why you do it in this way? Why you don't use the file to correct all the curves to make mm. it more even? It's the same idea I have in all my construction. I try to have a very close look to a real strat scroll. Mm -hmm. And what I could find is whenever you see the parts where it's not worn, mm -hmm. where it's really fresh, like here in the mouse or some parts you can't touch when you clean it over the centuries. Mm. And you can see that for sure, I'm very, very convinced that the whole chamfer was just cut. You think the, how the chamfer of the original Stradivari is cut, cut, by, cut by chisel? Yeah or with a knife, chisel, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you, you really can see cuts. So, and they didn't try to cover it with, with um, maybe with a um, horse tail or something mm. to smoothen it too much. Maybe a little bit they smoothened it and I do it as well with a very fine horse tail or something. I just take away the very sharp edges. Mm. But um, what I can't find is to, to take away all the cuts. So my intention always is to show mm. that's a craft that you are able really to do with knives mm. this precise work. I mean, you're really proud of it? It's a very special part. I really like the work to, to, mm. to say proud of it. It's mm. just, for me, a lot of things just have to be like it have to be. <laughs> Can you talk more about the material choices? Because normally from my order, because I know you well, normally I just choose the material from the, what we call the Olish tree. Mm -hmm. Can you introduce this tree to our clients, to our audience? I can tell you a story, maybe it, it's long, but um, a very famous German maker who is an expert for German instruments, mm. he didn't believe that this tree comes from Mittenwald. Because it's so beautiful? Because it's a typical Bosnian outlook what it has. It is. And the maple, the structure of the maple, it's quite different from all the other trees I ever saw in Mittenwald. Mm. It's really very, very special. It has this Bosnian surface, this Bosnian feeling when you touch it. Mm -hmm. And he asked me to send him a piece. Mm. After this piece, he said, okay, I have to rewrite my own books. <laughs> because he ever said, it doesn't exist, this maple. Mm. How do you find this tree? Just by walking around. Mm -hmm. it was... You are walking in the forest? I'm walking in the forest, yeah. I'm always, when I'm walking in forest, I'm always walking like this, looking for trees. So. Where is the forest? <laughs> take me there. I find my Gino tree. <laughs> we can go there. You can take it with you. Yeah. 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 yeah.
Uh, I think almost all your computation instruments are made by this kind of wood, right? A lot, yeah. The, yeah. the China one was it. Triennale. Triennale, yeah. The yeah. viola was made by this wood, yeah. yeah you can see yeah. from the long distance you recognize and you are using this Ulrich tree. Yeah. So we can see on this tree they are not that perfect looking. That means you can find a little bit knots on it or water lines on yeah. this, this map. Yeah. But uh, it seems you doesn't care about this kind of what we call effect of the tree. For me, it's, it's not a fault, it's not a mistake in the wood. Mm -hmm. As long as the wood has the good qualities, um, somehow I find it sometimes really attractive if there is not a knot, a really black knot. It's more like but a character, right? Yeah, it makes like it very person. special, yeah. Yeah. We are using the like, wood. Like a nice dot in your face. Yeah. So it's, it's just like the beautiful it's unique, woman. yeah. What kinds of material you, you are using for the varnish? Now this is just a, um, mm -hmm. a question of the rosin I use to mm -hmm. cook it. Mm -hmm. And the most of the color, almost, I would say 96, 97 percent, sometimes, sometimes 100, sometimes I use nothing else than the rosin cooked with oil. Mm -hmm. And the rosin creates this intense color. Mm -hmm. For sure you need to have the right, right ground color on there. Mm -hmm. It gives a nice harmony mm -hmm. between ground color and the varnish color. In this way, I just want to let you know that each instrument is made with all my skills and all my heart. I always try to give my best and I hope you will enjoy playing on this violin and maybe even um, live together till the rest of your life. So. Honestly, when I ask myself if I'm not a good seller, I cannot sell you the violin. I'm holding two Ulrich uh, Hingsberger inside my workshop. But I think if when I die, I still have these two violins, I'm not regret it because I can, with my honor, pass this two violin to my son and yeah. tell him, look, this is what your father found in 2010.